Okay, in the essence of time, we are going to get started. Um, thank you all for joining. Uh, this presentation is on the BCAM or Brief Confusion Assessment Method. The BCAM um, uh, in service today will take approximately 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so we should be done um, between 8 and 8.30. Um, the Brief Confusion Assessment Method, or BCAM, is a tool that's utilized in the medical, surgical, and emergency department settings um, to assess for delirium in older patients. The reason we are using BCAM is we are an age-friendly hospital. Our sixth floor nurses are currently working on the NICHE project, which is Nurses Improving Care for Health System Elders. We're also doing this because delirium is um, not a routinely screened for um, condition in clinical settings, and it does have impacts to patients. Um, the impacts it has on patients um, for those who survive delirium um, is associated with acceler accelerated cognitive and functional declines, which as you guys know, is going to lead to um, patients having a loss of independence, um, they have higher incidence of um, pressure injuries as well as incontinence. Um, they have increased health care costs, prolongs length of stay, um, and these patients are more likely to come back and be um, re-hospitalized or readmitted to our facilities. Um, and some statistics show that it is missed in approximately 80% of hospitalized patients. Um, this tool is an objective measure of delirium. It has four different features, and we're going to go through a couple training videos and exercises on how to actually do the uh, BCAM, as well as show you in Meditech how we would do the BCAM. The four different features we look at are altered mental status or fluctuating course in mental status, um, inattention, altered levels of consciousness, and disorganized thinking. In order for patients to be characterized as meeting, uh, being BCAM positive or having the potential for delirium, they need to have one and two, which is altered mental status or a fluctuating course, inattention. So both of those have to be present and then either an altered level of consciousness or disorganized thinking. This takes less than two minutes to perform can be done just when you're routinely assessing your patients. Um, we're going to have staff on four, five, six, and seven perform this every shift and as needed for a status change. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about caveats or, or specific patient conditions. Does anybody have questions? Uh, um, Kristen brought up a good point. Thank you, Kristen. Um, we do have to only do this in patients who are 65 years of age or older. Um, so only for your patients who are 65 and older. All right, so we are going to watch a short video. Are you all able to see the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Assessment validated for older or determined patients. Hi. Hi. They're going to talk about the brief confusion assessment method, otherwise known as BCAM. The BCAM is a pre delirium assessment validated for older or determined patients. In this video, we'll cover the following. First, we'll provide First, we'll a brief provide overview of what the BCAM is. is. Then we'll show so we'll an actual show patient demonstration. demonstration. Then we'll discuss, then we'll discuss each, each of the features of the features BCAM in detail. detail. And lastly, we'll go over some over common, common errors. errors. The BCAM, the BCAM uses the same uses algorithm, algorithm as a confusion assessment method, method, otherwise known as a CAM, developed by Sharon anyway. anyway. The CAM the is probably is the most widely used and studied delirium assessment and consists of four features. Feature one is the presence of an acute change in mental status or fluctuating course. Feature two is inattention. Feature three is disorganized thinking. And feature four is altered level of consciousness. The rate determines the presence or absence of each of the CAMS features using clinical judgment. 
while performing a patient interview and a global test of cognition. The BCAM uses the same CAM algorithm, but uses objective testing with pre-specified cutoffs to determine the presence of inattention and disorganized thinking. An arousal scale such as the Richmond Agitation and Sedation Scale is also used to quantify level of consciousness. The BCAM also reverses CAM's features three and four. So feature three of the BCAM is ultra level of consciousness and feature four is disorganized thinking. Similar to the CAM, for a patient to be BCAM positive, he or she must have both features one and two and either features three or four. The BCAM is 78 to 84% sensitive and 96 to 97% specific for delirium in older emergency department patients. The diagnostic performance is similar in older patients who are admitted to the hospital. The BCAM typically takes one to two minutes to perform and it can be reliably performed by physicians and non-physicians alike. You can also perform the BCAM algorithmically, which allows for early stoppage and reduces the time spent with the patient. So let's say you had a patient who was feature two negative. At this point, you can stop the assessment. A patient cannot be BCAM positive without this feature. So let's go over a patient demonstration. Mr. P is a 71-year-old male who slipped and fell while doing yard work. He hit his head on the ground but denies any loss of consciousness. He is in the emergency department by himself. Hi, this is Dr. Hong. How's everything going today? Good, how are you? Well, I'm a physician at Vanderbilt University Hospital. I'm, I'm taking care of your father today. And um, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions about his mental status and about how he's been thinking. Sure. So when's the last time you saw your father? Uh, I saw him a few hours ago before he left for the hospital. Okay. And have you talked to him over the past couple of days as well? Oh, yes. He lives with me. All right. Well, I just had a couple of questions about how confused he's been. Um, was he acting normal to you when the last time you saw him? Yes, he was acting normally. And has he been more confused to you lately? No. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. You're welcome. I'm going to ask you to do this task. Can you name the months backwards from December to July? Can you name the months backwards from December to July? December, November, October, September, August, July. Good. Now, I'm going to ask you a couple of yes and no questions, all right? The first question is, will a stone float on water? No. Are there fish in the sea? Yes. Does one pound weigh more than two pounds? No. And can you use a hammer to pound a nail? Yes. And can you hold up this many fingers in one of your hands? Yes. And can you, can you do the same with the other hand? Excellent. Now we're going to go over each of the BCAM features in detail. But before we go on, it must be stated that delirium is only accessible in patients who are arousable to verbal stimulation. If the patient's only arousable to painful stimulation, then the patient is considered to be stuporous or comatose, which are more severe forms of acute brain dysfunction. You cannot test for delirium when the patients are in these states. To be positive for feature one, you must have an acute change in mental status or fluctuating course. This is usually obtained from a collateral historian, such as a family member or caregiver. If the patient is from a skilled nursing facility, you can interview the patient's nurse at that facility. Oftentimes, collateral history is not going to be readily available. For example, 30% of older emergency department patients will present alone. In these cases, I'll call a family member, caregiver, or skilled nursing facility after the patient interview. If the patient is features 2, 3, and 4 negative, I'll sometimes forego the determination of feature 1 especially if the patient performs these tasks well. Fluctuations can also be observed during your clinical evaluation. If you observe the patient to be slightly confused when you first meet him or her, and then he or she becomes more markedly confused at a later point in time, then this is likely a fluctuation and the patient should be considered feature one positive. To determine feature one, I typically ask a collateral historian, do you think the patient has been more confused lately? If the answer to this question is yes, then the patient should be considered to be feature one positive. Alternatively, you can ask the collateral historian, does the patient seem more confused to you right now? If the answer is yes to this question, then the patient should be considered to have an acute change in mental status and feature one positive. 
To determine fluctuations specifically, you can ask, does the patient's confusion get better and worse over time? Now, in the emergency department, patients may come in with a chief complaint of altered mental status. In these cases, the patient will be considered feature one positive and no collateral history is needed. So the patient demonstration, um, the patient was feature one negative based upon the daughter's history. So feature two is inattention, which is a cardinal feature of delirium. To determine this feature, we ask the patient to recite the months backwards from December to July. If the patient makes two or more errors, then the patient is considered to be inattentive and feature two positive. We typically recommend stopping the task if the patient gets stuck on a month or repeats a sequence of months for greater than 15 seconds. If the patient's unable to perform a task or refuses to perform it, then the patient is considered to be feature two positive as well. So here are some examples of how you would code feature two. So let's say the patient <laughs> recites December, November, and October. This patient will be given three errors. Any missing month is considered one error each. A patient recites December, November, September, October, August, July will be given two errors. October and September are switched and would be considered to be two errors. The patient in the demonstration was able to recite the months backwards from December to July without any error. As a result, he is considered to be feature two negative. Feature three is altered level of consciousness. We used the Richmond Agitation Sedation Scale, or the RAS, to quantify level of consciousness. Originally, it was designed to monitor depth of sedation, but it's been modified to help assess for level of consciousness in many delirium assessments. A RAS of zero indicates that the patient has normal level of consciousness. In this case, the patient would be feature three negative. A RAS other than zero indicates altered level of consciousness and the patient would be feature three positive. A RAS less than zero indicates decreased level of consciousness, while a RAS greater than zero indicates increased level of consciousness. Remember, a RAS of neg negative four or negative five indicates a patient's stupor or comatose. Delirium would not be accessible in these states. Your determination of the patient's level of consciousness begins the moment you start your evaluation to the moment you leave the room. In the patient demonstration, the patient had a RAS of zero. As a result, he has normal level of consciousness and is feature three negative. Feature four is disorganized thinking, and this is determined by asking the patient four yes and no questions and asking the patient to perform a simple command. Any error would be considered positive for disorganized thinking. The patient in the demonstration was able to answer all four questions correctly and he was able to perform the simple command correctly as well. As a result, he is feature four negative. The patient in the demonstration was feature one negative, feature two negative, feature three negative, and feature four negative. As a result, he is BCAM negative. Now, if you were pressed for time, you could have performed the BCAM algorithmically and stopped the assessment after you determined that he was feature two negative. So let's go over some common errors with the BCAM. One common error that occurs is when the BCAM is rated as unable to assess after a patient refuses to perform or is unable to perform feature two. As previously stated, patients who refuse or are unable to perform feature two are inattentive. The only exception is when the patient has a RAS of negative four or negative five. These patients are considered to be stuporous or comatose and delirium cannot be assessed in these states. The same can be said about feature four or disorganized thinking. I've also seen raters assign a RAS of zero to a patient who was obviously drowsy because they thought the patient's altered level of consciousness was secondary to the patient receiving a psychoactive medication such as morphine. They thought that without the morphine, the patient would have had a normal RAS. This is obviously incorrect. A drowsy patient should be assigned a RAS of less than zero regardless of etiology. In other words, the patient's level of consciousness assessment should be based upon your observation alone and should not take into account the etiology of the altered level of consciousness. Now, the common error is when raters think you simply need three out of four features to be BCAM positive. This is not going to be true for all cases. In the scenario you see here, the patient is features one, three, and four positive, but is feature two negative. The patient would be considered BCAM negative in this scenario. 
For a patient to be BCAM positive, both features one and two must be present, in addition to either features three or four. For this reason, we recommend using the BCAM flow sheet to help minimize this error. Well, this is the end of the video, and we thank you for watching. For more information about the BCAM and some practice. So, what questions do you guys have? For the um, feature that we ask a yes or no questions, in our uh -huh. charting, is it going to give us the questions? It will. I'll show you the many text screens um, after our next video. Good question. Any other questions? Okay, so we're going to watch uh, another patient video. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is, can you name the months backwards and go from December to July? Name the months backwards and go backwards from December to July. Uh, December, November, uh, September, uh, October, August, um, July. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask you a couple of yes, no questions. All right. And just answer yes or no. Will a stone float on water? No. Are there fish in the sea? Yes. Does one pound weigh more than two pounds? Yes. Okay. And can you use a hammer to pound a nail? Yes. And can you show me this number of fingers in one of your hands or hold up this many fingers? Perfect. And can you do the same with the other hand? Okay. Hello? Hey, this is Dr. Hahn from Vanderbilt Hospital. I'm taking Hi. care of your father, and I was wondering if I can ask you some questions. Sure. All right. Well, when's the last time you saw your father? I saw him a few hours ago, right before he left for the hospital. All right. And have you talked to him or seen him for the past couple of days as well? Yes, he lives with me. Great, great. Well, I just had a couple of questions about how he's been doing from a mental status or a confused standpoint. So has he been acting normally to you when you last uh, saw him this morning? Well, he was acting fine when he left the house, but he did not have a good night. Oh, how so? He was up most of the night talking out of his head. He was also talking to people that weren't there. I think he was hallucinating. That's why we sent him to the hospital. And how long has this been going on for? This has been going on for the past two days or so. Okay, and these symptoms that you're describing, uh, do, they, do they get better and worse over time? He'd have good moments where he was acting more like his normal okay. self, and then he would have other moments where he seems utterly confused. And this is clearly not normal for him, is that correct? No, that's not normal. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is, can you name the months backwards and go from December to July? Name the months backwards and go backwards from December to July. Uh, December, November, uh, September, uh, October, August, um, July. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask you a couple of yes, no questions. All right. And just answer yes or no. Will a stone float on water? No. Are there fish in the sea? Yes. Does one pound weigh more than two pounds? Yes. Okay. And can you use a hammer to pound a nail? Yes. And can you show me this number of fingers in one of your hands or hold up this many fingers? 
perfect. And can you do the same with the other hand? Hey, this is Dr. Hahn from Vanderbilt Hospital. I'm taking Hi. care of your father, and I was wondering if I can ask you some questions. Sure. All right. Well, when's the last time you saw your father? I saw him a few hours ago, right before he left for the hospital. All right. And have you talked to him or seen him for the past couple of days as well? Yes, he lives with me. Great, great. Well, I just had a couple of questions about how he's been doing from a mental status or a confused standpoint. So has he been acting normally to you when you last uh, saw him this morning? Well, he was acting fine when he left the house, but he did not have a good night. Oh, how so? He was up most of the night talking out of his head. He was also talking to people that weren't there. I think he was hallucinating. That's why we sent him to the hospital. And how long has this been going on for? This has been going on for the past two days or so. Okay, and these symptoms that you're describing, uh, they do they get better and worse over time? He'd have good moments where he was acting more like his normal okay. self. And then he would have other moments where he seems utterly confused. And this is clearly not normal for him, is that correct? No, that's not normal. Okay. So now we've seen one where the patient was BCAM negative and one where a patient was BCAM positive. When you um, get your patient, it will automatically have the BCAM assessment in your standard of care or your SOC. Um, so it's here, it says age 65 or older. If my patient is under the age of 65, I'm going to just complete it and take it off my intervention list. Um, if the patient is 65 or older, then I am gonna go in and document on the assessment. Before we go into the assessment, I just want you to know that if you click here on this arrow under protocol, it goes into how to do the Richmond Agitation Sedation Scale. We do identify that this is a new tool for you um, and a new scale to assess a patient's level of consciousness. I think in your neuro assessment, we have the Glasgow Coma Scale. Um, this is another um, a tool we can utilize to assess um, level of consciousness. So on the top, what it does is it describes to you um, where your patient would fall and then underneath it's going to tell you how to actually do it. Any questions there? Okay. So when we go into document on my BCAM, the first one is feature one, altered mental status or fluctuating course. If I choose no, I come down here and my BCAM result is BCAM negative. I can stop the intervention, I can save this, and I'm finished. If the answer is yes, so the patient has an altered mental status or a fluctuating course from baseline, it's going to prompt me to continue down to do feature two where I have the patients name the months backwards from December to July. Altered mental status, if your patient's admitted with a diagnosis of altered mental status, then yes would be the answer here. You can also get that information from the nurse who's handing off to you. Is this different than the patient's baseline um, or family or um, the previous medical record? When the patient names the months backwards from December to July, if they have zero to one error, they are BCAM um, negative and it will automatically calculate here. You have to have one feature one and feature two in order to characterize a patient of potential delirium. Okay, if this populates, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna stop my patient as BCAM negative. If I have more than one error, so they've messed up, they have, um, you know, switch months, 
um, we're going to move on to their level of consciousness, feature three. If I look at my patient, they're alert and calm. Um, I would click zero. Okay. And then it would make me continue on to four. However, if my patient is drowsy, meaning they can, um, can't keep their eyes open for more than 10 seconds, but can make eye contact, I'm going to click one. And you see my patients be cam positive because I had one, two, and either feature three or feature four. So I could stop here. Okay, but let's choose alert and calm. And we're going to move on to feature four, disorganized thinking. These are where your questions are going to be in the descriptor text. Okay, will a stone float on water? Are there fish in the sea? Does one pound weigh more than two? Can you use a hammer to pound a nail? Then you have the commands, hold up this many fingers. So you hold up two fingers and then you have the patient repeat it with the other hand, but don't demonstrate when they're repeating it with the other hand. If for some reason your patient's unable to move an arm, let's say they had a stroke, they're unable to do that on one side, you're gonna give them a direction to just add one more finger and you don't uh, demonstrate that. Okay, so if they have zero errors, they are negative. If they have more than one error, they're positive. So if I come to the determination that my patient is BCAM positive, I need to notify a provider and I can document that in the provider notification record who I contacted. You also can put it in here. Okay. Um, a lot of the literature shows that um, there's no magical treatment for delirium, so a medication isn't necessarily going to help, but simple um, nursing interventions that we can do are things like um, reorienting the patient, um, making sure that we're speaking softly in the room, um, we're getting patients out of bed and mobilizing them with PT, um, we're maintaining their sleep-wake cycle. So at night, we're dimming the lights and keeping them down. Um, during the day, when we come in, we're turning the lights on, we're opening the blinds um, so that we, we can really maintain that um, circadian rhythm and day and night. Um, you can also include family members, making sure that they have their eyeglasses, their hearing aids, any other devices they may need. Um, and if there's anything else you think of, you can type it in here out of bed for meals. Then we also have an additional comment box if you feel the need um, to document anything additionally. What questions do we have on the BCAM assessment? Is this going to just naturally <laughs> pop up in interventions? Or do we have to add it? It will populate in your standard of care on five, six, and seven, and the um, admission for inpatients on short stay. So it will automatically be there. Yep, on everyone. You do have to just remember if they're under 65, you're going to complete the intervention. Good question, Kate. What other questions? A quick overview, BCAM, Brief Confusion Assessment Method, assesses for delirium. There are four features. You have to have one and two, and either feature three or four to be considered positive. We'll notify a provider if they are BCAM positive. Um, only age 65 and older, and Go Live is going to be March 1st will be our go live. Okay. Any additional questions? Okay. Anyone um, additional? For the Richmond agita agitation scale, you said that you, we have to follow it with the arrow, but it doesn't um, pop up in the B cam like assessment part, where would we document for that? 
So it's in its feature three. So the Richmond agitation sedation scale is feature three in the tool. It's right here, this altered level of consciousness or RAS scale. So these numbers are directly from the Richmond agitation sedation scale. You can view the protocol in that screen you're in as well. Like see right at the bottom there. So here, if I want to view protocol, because I can't remember. And I, we are, I think we're going to also be posting um, copies of the Richmond agitation sedation scale in the units as, as a reference for you guys to look at. Does that answer that question? Yeah, thank you. Uh Any additional questions? OK. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thank you.